often get the question, what's the difference between a Reiki 1 class and a Reiki 2 class? What's the difference between the levels? I love this question because there's so many things about Reiki 2 that I'd love to teach and to share. First and foremost, it's the logical. Everything you learned in Reiki 1, you bring that forward, and then we expand upon it in Reiki 2. The thing that I found that was just so huge in my own life was that in Reiki 2, I began to learn how to use it in my everyday life, all the time. I know in Reiki 1, we talk about self-care, we learn the hand positions and how to work on plants and animals and things like that. But Reiki too, we begin to work with it in all aspects. We work with it in like power and protection and guidance and manifesting. All these many aspects because we learn symbols and we learn mantras and we learn the way in which we can use them because everything's energy. That's like the first principle we talk about and how we go about our day. All right. We also learn long distance healing techniques. And I love this because it allows you to send Reiki anywhere in the world to anybody you want to, even like right here through the computer, through Zooming, there's a great way to send energy for healing. It's really amazing techniques. We also talk about sending energy to the past and the present, right? That's very much covered in the class as well. There's so many aspects that you can work with Reiki with and the Reiki to class really helps you to open up. I always say everybody in the world needs Reiki 1. And then I say, if you really want to have fun and really want to get into the energy, Reiki 2 is the class for you. The other levels, Reiki 3 and Reiki Master, that really depends on your path. And I don't feel like it's necessary for everybody to go there. It's good. It helps you to confirm and really work and walk that path. But I love Reiki 2 because it's so much fun. So the mantras and the symbols really open us up to a whole world of understanding of energy and the world in which we live. Many times you'll hear people talk about Reiki 1 as being the physical level. We talk about the hand positions, we work through the body on the chakras, how to work on somebody else. So that's the foundation. But Reiki 2, we start to get a little bit into that energy psychology balancing the mental and the emotional realms, working with addictions. And so there's symbols and protocols that we learn and Reiki is just so creative and so open. It's really limitless in what you can do. Really, you just need your imagination and how you want to work with it once you learn the basic premises of those symbols. I love it for that reason. Now, over the years, and especially during COVID, I have even been growing my Reiki practice, growing my knowledge, working with some shamans, and adding in shamanism into the tools of Reiki too. Kind of calling it Reiki shamanism, right? There's so many things that overlap. And so I find it a really beautiful way to blend it. And if you've known me, if you know me or follow me, you know that I love Mother Earth. I talk about the sacred elements all the time. I talk about the fire ceremonies, the sweat lodges. And so I like to add this in as well. The class that I'm offering includes this. If you're local or want to come in the night before, we do a nice little fire ceremony. We do a cacao ceremony, work with the plant medicine. We set intentions. We walk the path. And we really set the energy with Mother Earth which allows you to even expand upon it as we go to learn the techniques and the protocols the following days. It's not required for the Reiki certification. I don't require it, but it's a nice way to start to work with Mother Earth. So if you're in town and want to do it, that's an added bonus for the class. Otherwise, the class is being offered on Zoom as well because it really helps you to learn how to send Reiki at a distance. It really builds that confidence. Even if everybody is in person, we still break off into rooms. We get our Zoom, our notebooks, our pads, our computers out, and we practice the protocols for sending energy. So fascinating. It really is. It teaches you a whole nother understanding that everything is energy. Now, I didn't even mention one of the most favorite things for me is working with crystals. So in Reiki 2, we begin to work with the crystals and the symbols, blending them in, using them for much more power in the way in which you work with your sessions. At least I think so. Included is a little chakra bag, right? And we talk about how you feel Reiki, how you use it. And then I teach you techniques, especially for sending energy, how to set up a crystal grid for a person that you're working on. I'd love it. We talk about how to clear them, how to charge them. And again, those are the tools of Reiki as well. And then adding in some of that shamanism, cutting cords, releasing energy, commanding energy. Really fascinating when we move into Reiki too. I also expand upon the seven chakra system that we opened up in Reiki 1 using the 12 chakra system, adding the five outer body chakras as well, 
something I've been studying with Cindy Dale, shout out to my teacher, adding that into the way in which we work with Reiki as well. So there's so many fascinating things. It grows your practice, it grows your dedication, and it grows your awareness of what Reiki energy really can do and be and how it can guide you. I went to Costa Rica to study with the shaman and it was Reiki that guided me. I had some protocols set up for the travel. I kept very focused and I just kept that energy of Reiki around me, something I had never done before, travel alone to a foreign country. And I just allowed, these are the ways in which you can work with Reiki in your everyday life. Come join me for the class. To your spirit.